Counter-Strike is a first-person shooter. Primarily on PC, it came to the X-Bone recently, and it's arriving on the 30fps pre-rendered machine in late August. Don't know why though, it's difficult enough to play with a mouse and keyboard, and flick shots with a controller seem damn near impossible unless you have auto-aim. They were going to do cross-platform servers, but after some initial testing and realising PC players would annihilate the filthy peasants, they dropped the idea pretty sharpish. The last major tournament broke CSGO Twitch records reaching an audience count of 1.3 million people in the Grand Finals, which is an absolute fuckton. The amount of people playing has increased by a massive 2,482% since April 2013, reaching a peak of 850,000 concurrent online players. To put that into perspective, that's the population of Fiji, or slightly less than the amount of sexual partners people in the game have told me that my mum's had. Throughout the series, starting with Counter-Strike 1.5, through to the newest update Global Offensive, the game has remained largely structurally the same, in terms of maps, objectives, guns, game mechanics and the prevalence of hackers. But in the newest game they added one small change and suddenly it's exploded to become monstrously huge. Therefore, it's only logical to assume that this small change is the reason for making the game as big as it is today. Seemingly insignificant at the time, it ultimately led to advertisers getting on board, audiences skyrocketing, YouTube celebrities being born, and prize pools going from a peak of $100,000 in 2012 to $250,000 in 2013 and onwards to a huge million dollars in 2016. And that small change was the introduction of our Christmas jumper wearing, foon bunny hopping, exploding furry feathered friends, the goddamn chickens. But surely the chickens don't affect the fucking game at all I hear you say. Well, wait a bloody second and let me explain. For all of you new to Counter-Strike, first off you head into the game, choosing the most competitive playstyle and the one that they use in tournaments. Once you've chosen a selection of maps you wouldn't mind smashing noobs on, it'll sort you out with a game of 5 versus 5 other players on one of the random maps that you've picked. But if you choose this little sandy fucker, then you will have a 99% chance of playing on it. So we're going to go ahead and unselect it and find a game. Once that's found, a poorly written piece of code means you'll have to press the accept button so fast and so many times you'll be like a Japanese teenager in an arcade game. So the easiest way to show you is to divide what goes on in the game and you'll be able to see what's happening. The first team to 16 rounds is the winner. Each round is 115 seconds long excluding bomb plants and if you die you will have to wait to the next round to respawn. Dying early in a round is a sure sign of a retard. Leaving your team at a 4 vs 5 deficit means you've basically lost the round. So people just chill and wait for the other team to make a mistake. So to pass the time, people shoot our avian friends. The game, game breaking bugs. Here. Do it, do don't, it. Don't hump the chicken. <laughs> don't hump the chicken. They hump them, chase them, and literally spend the first 40 seconds of each round harassing our poor chickens. And if you're unfortunate enough to be playing against the professional team Navi, who only execute their strategies in the dying seconds of each round, even more of the game is dedicated to chicken harassment, and a fair amount of it is a stand around with a gun simulator. Evidently, the primary game has changed to chicken killing, and clearly people fucking love it. Much more than the original game, judging by its astronomical northward spike in players since CSGO started, it's exploded, ironically much like the chickens. So, I for one wanted to make this video to thank our chicken overlords, without you the game would have never become so big, and I'd be out of a job.